This video focuses on bounding thermal zones in thermal simulation models. This video is another exploration from strategies for deploying virtual representations of the built environment. One technique for delivering timely information to clients is to focus on a typical portion of a larger project. Such models can maintain high resolution without incurring a computational penalty. We must, however, ensure that we maintain realistic boundary conditions at the edges of our model. ESP offers a, quote, similar boundary condition. The other face of a surface is subjected to conditions like the current zone. It can save considerable amounts of time, but what is the cost of this abstraction, and are there some cases where we should not use it? A classic case where similar introduces risk is ceiling voids. They're a host to mixes of piping and ducts and equipment. Light fittings contribute heat to such spaces. They often have facade exposure and experience leakage with the outside. Chances are temperature in ceiling voids does not match that of adjacent offices. Ensuring robust boundary conditions for models of portions of buildings is the focus of this video. We will use an ESPR model, which includes a dozen small offices on two levels. The main point of the model was to explore different heat transfer methods, but it also includes ceiling voids at the upper and lower bounds of the model. Representing ceiling voids as thermal zones is, for many practitioners, a no-brainer. In the model, the middle ceiling void between the two levels of offices is fully bounded. However, the lower ceiling void in this model does not have a fully defined set of offices below it. So what happens if it uses a similar boundary condition at its base? Similarly, the upper floor ceiling void has no offices above. What happens if it uses a similar boundary condition at its upper surface. Assuming that a ceiling void is half bounded by yet another ceiling void, if we run an assessment for a cold week in Copenhagen, there's actually a two to three degree temperature difference between the predicted temperatures of the ceiling voids in this model. The predictions would be more robust if the upper and lower ceiling voids were to track the temperature of the middle ceiling void. ESP offers a match temperature ideal control law, which enables this. Let's have a look. In the control definitions, we need control loops for the lower ceiling void and one for the upper ceiling void. They can use a very simple schedule, needs to apply all days at all times. The attributes we need to give it are a heating and cooling capacity to enable the matching and a pointer to which zone to match. With this in place, the predicted temperatures in the ceiling voids are consistent. Did this make a difference? Well, let's aggregate the heating and cooling delivered into the occupied spaces with and without the temperature matching control. Yes, there is a difference. It's not particularly earth shattering in this model. In another model, it might be noticeable. The big idea is that explicit ceiling voids are worth including in models. And where they form the bounds of a model, we have a quick method for getting around some of the limitations of similar boundary conditions.